When we think about great inventions, we usually imagine expensive laboratories with huge teams and cutting-edge technology. However, there are unbelievable things being invented in completely opposite settings. Inside villages, garage workshops, and universities with few resources, there are Africans showing incredible machines. That is exactly what we are going to see here today. Two young people are using creativity and scrap to change lives, literally with the power of thought. David Gathua and Moses Kanua from Kayambu County in Kenya created a mind-controlled robotic arm. The prototype was made with discarded computer parts and recycled wood. And the most impressive thing is that it really works. The technology is based on an interface that connects brain signals directly to the robotic arm. In other words, it is enough to think about raising the arm, waving, or even operating a computer, and the mechanism obeys. The idea is to help people with physical disabilities perform simple, everyday tasks with more autonomy. Without financial support, they used everything they had nearby. They learned on their own, studying since high school, and were inspired by movies like Robocop to design the model. Today, even with the project's repercussion, the pair still awaits investment to be able to manufacture the prosthesis on a larger scale. The goal is to reach part of the almost 1 million people in the country who live without one of their limbs. The two's robotic arm is one of those examples that show that innovation does not depend only on money or on a cutting-edge laboratory. Sometimes, it is born from a a real problem from an idea in the head and from a pile of scrap in the garage. The electrical engineer from Kenya, Morris Mbetsa, is trying to change the future of mobility. He drew attention by creating Africa's first passenger transport drone. That is right, a drone capable of carrying one person on board, fully functional and successfully tested. The test took place near Nairobi and was accompanied by a news crew from Citizen TV. In the video, Morris and his team explain all the technical details of the machine, with custom-made motors, electronic speed controllers, carbon propellers, and even a system that allows remote piloting, as if it were a video game controller. The idea arose inspired by projects like those of Uber and the German startup Volocopter, which also test flying vehicles in the United States of America and in the United Arab Emirates. But Morris wants something geared toward African realities. In Kenya, where traffic can be chaotic and access to certain regions is complicated, such a drone could make a real difference, both in the transport of tourists and in search and rescue missions. The project is still experimental, but Morris is optimistic. He is already thinking of a version with an app, flying taxi style, and hopes for support to turn the prototype into something truly accessible. It may be that soon you can use one of these to get to work faster, as if it were a car from the old days. In 2015, in the interior of Uganda, a self-taught mechanic named Joseph Nkaheza did what seemed impossible by building a functional helicopter out of scrap. Without technical training, without government support, and with what he learned tinkering with motorbikes since childhood, Joseph assembled his first aircraft using a motorcycle engine, a wooden structure, and repurposed metal. And yes, the thing took off. The helicopter hovered for a few meters in the air before losing control, crashing, and falling to pieces. Joseph survived but spent one month recovering from fractures and injuries. Even so, he did not give up. In 2018, he came back with a new version, reinforced cabin, doors, and metal fairing. All much more professional. Only the second test also had problems. The aircraft fell again, and this time the injuries were even more serious. Since then, Joseph has never tried to fly again, at least not without technical support. Today, he still lives in Imbarara, trying to get help from institutions or investors to complete his project. Meanwhile, he continues inventing. He has already assembled cars used in weddings and even an improvised vehicle that serves as an ambulance in the region. Joseph is, to this day, the only African known to have made a homemade helicopter that managed to leave the ground, a story that shows that genius does not need a diploma. Sometimes, all that is needed is courage, a wrench, and a slightly crazy dream. 
In the north of Nigeria, a 17-year-old boy is trying to solve with his own hands a problem the government never managed to handle. His name is Khalifa Aminu, and he created a pair of smart glasses aimed at people with visual impairments. Khalifa knows this reality up close. For years, he was a guide for blind people in his community and saw how difficult it is to walk the streets without support. The idea arose from that, a device that would alert the user to obstacles ahead without depending on anyone nearby. The operation is simple, with sensors on the glasses that detect any object in the path and trigger sound and visual alerts. Thus, the person themselves can change direction more safely, and those nearby also notice that it is someone with low vision. The technology uses infrared waves and is still at the prototype stage. For now, the range of the sensors reaches about 2 meters, which already makes a difference in daily life. For many people, it may seem like just a gizmo, but for those who depend on help even to leave the house, this kind of innovation means freedom. And the most impressive thing is that all this came from the hands of a teenager in a country where almost no one expects such solutions to come from an ordinary young person. In Kisumu, in Kenya, an inventor named Teddy Jacob Omondi created a pair of sneakers that seems to have come out of a science fiction movie, assembled entirely from recycled parts taken from broken electronics. The super sandals, as he himself calls them, have very unusual functions. You can listen to music directly in them via a USB port or FM radio. They have a headphone jack, built-in lights for those who walk at night, and even a foot massage system. All that in a single piece of footwear. Omondi works with robotics and collects the materials in workshops that repair radios and televisions. He himself programs the parts to work as he wants, without relying on large equipment or a high budget. According to him, the idea came from thinking about people who have difficulties using common footwear, especially people with leg pain or who need extra comfort in daily life. His invention did not take long to draw attention. A local enthusiast, Duran Manyala, has already guaranteed that he will add the pair to his collection. He said he always carries a flashlight and headphones to walk at night, but now he only needs to put on the sneakers. For now, everything is handmade, without production at scale. But the invention shows what can arise when creative people encounter real needs of the population. In a remote village in Malawi, a country among the poorest in the world, a 14-year-old boy decided to face hunger in a very uncommon way. William Kamkwamba had to drop out of school because his family could not pay the tuition of $80. Without electricity, without food, and without much perspective, he went to look for answers in the only free thing nearby, which was the library. Even without understanding English very well, William began to study on his own, looking at diagrams and images. That was when he found a book about wind energy. He had a spark. If he could generate electricity with the wind, he could pump water from the ground and save the crops. With no money, he improvised. He scavenged parts in junkyards, took apart a broken bicycle, used fan blades, and even pieces of polyvinyl chloride pipe to assemble a windmill. It worked. He managed to generate enough energy to light four light bulbs, power two radios, and charge cell phones in the neighborhood. The feat drew the world's attention. William became news, gave a talk at the TED conference, technology, entertainment, and design, wrote a book, and graduated from a university in the United States of America. After that, he returned to Malawi, where he built an irrigation system, opened a school and even created an innovation center. It all started with trash, wind, and an old book. And it ended with a boy changing the fate of an entire village. An inventor named Maxwell Chikumbutso in Zimbabwe began to draw attention with an idea that seems like science fiction. He created a generator that works without fuel, without outlets, and without recharging. According to him, the source of energy comes from the air itself. The project was named Microsonic. He became famous on social networks in 2025 after Maxwell presented his creation to the country's president, Emerson Manangagwa. What impressed people the most was his proposal, an electric motor capable of moving vehicles using only radio waves and cosmic rays as an energy source. No gasoline, no battery, and of course, no cost.
In videos that went viral, the inventor shows a car moving with the system activated. Chikumbutso claims that the motor is self-sufficient and can reach high speeds. The promise, if true, would represent a complete shift in how we deal with energy, especially in regions with limited access to electricity. But, along with the fame, came tension. Maxwell is said to have declared that he has already suffered threats because of the invention. Some videos suggest that he fears for his own life, citing possible retaliation from the oil industry. Whether it is real or not, there are still many doubts. But one thing is certain, the idea of an air-fed motor is already enough to make half the world curious and the other half suspicious. In Ghana, an inventor named Jake Antwi decided to build a helicopter using scrap, without engineering training, without a workshop, without sponsorship. Only with improvised tools, bicycle parts, household appliance components, and a lot of stubbornness, he created the EEUYM-005, a handcrafted helicopter that seems to have been assembled in a shed between a broken fan and a barbecue grill. The engine makes the noise of a seized motorbike. The rotor spins only when it wants to. The structure, more compact than a phone booth, has parts so different that they seem to have come from several houses at the same time. The windows were taken from an abandoned Toyota Corolla. The control stick wobbles as if it wanted to run away from there. And on the seat, only a thin person fits and, even then, it is best not to move too much. Jake says the project was born with a noble goal, to help residents of rural areas with emergency medical transport. The idea was to create an ambulance helicopter. The problem is that it barely fits the pilot. Imagine a patient. Even so, the EEUYM-005 managed to leave the ground, a few centimeters for a few seconds, but it did. And that was already enough to show that he was trying to do the impossible with what he has. In Freetown, the capital of Sierra Leone, a young man named Emmanuel decided to tackle a problem that affects his city every day, the pollution caused by cars. He saw the air getting heavy and knew that it harmed everyone, causing allergies, infections, and even more serious diseases. It happens that creating a clean solution requires money, and he did not have it. That was when Emmanuel decided to use the cheapest resource there is, imagination itself. He began to visit junkyards and to collect everything that could be used, pieces of metal, cables, wires, even toy parts. Little by little, little, he began assembling something that had previously seemed impossible. Three years later, the imagination car was born. A small vehicle painted with the colors of Sierra Leone, green, white, and blue, equipped with doors, headlights, brakes, and even a horn. But the most impressive detail is on the roof, a solar panel that powers the entire system. No gasoline, no diesel, and no smoke. The maximum speed reaches 15 kilometers per hour, enough to prove that the idea works. Whenever Emmanuel goes out on the streets, people stop to look at the car made of scrap. And he already has bigger plans, plus another 50 inventions, designed to reduce pollution, noise, and improve the environment. He himself said that solutions for African problems can also be born in Africa itself, with nothing more than creativity and determination. Three university students from Nigeria decided to create a fully robotic guard dog. The project began in 2019 at Adakunli Ajasin University in the southwest of the country. The idea was simple but ambitious. A mechanical dog covered by a black skin, capable of reacting to sound and movement, and that begins to bark whenever it detects something strange. The animal's eye is a camera installed in its chest. Thus, the owner can see on the cell phone what provoked the barking, without needing to expose themselves to a possible threat. All of this was designed to help in combating insecurity, which is a serious problem in the country. Construction was not quick. The aluminum structure and the theoretical part were ready before the pandemic, but restrictions delayed everything. Only in 2021 did they manage to finish the first version, equipped with sensors, a camera, and a more realistic look. The prototype is not perfect yet. It still needs to be programmed to move on its own, avoid obstacles, recognize the owner, and operate in any weather. In addition, almost all the parts are imported, which makes the project more expensive. The professor who supervises the work says that the next generation should be more more aggressive and interactive, to act even more efficiently in property defense. In a country where many regions face robberies, kidnappings, and armed attacks, the idea of having a guard dog that never sleeps and does not face physical risks can be a real part of a solution. 
Emeka Wizi, a young man from Oka in southeastern Nigeria, is trying to solve a problem that affects millions of people. It is the lack of reliable energy. In the country, about 80 million people live without constant access to the electrical grid. The most common solution is gasoline or diesel generators, expensive, noisy, and polluting. But Emeka decided to go another way. Using discarded parts such as motorcycle batteries, wires, and scrap metals, he created a water-powered generator. The equipment is capable of producing energy for up to six hours without emitting smoke. The idea was born from a personal tragedy. Still a child, Emeka lost a friend because of an accident involving a common generator. Since then, he has become a defender of clean energy solutions and began experimenting with electronics and simple light and sound systems. The first prototype came out in 2001, and since then, he has not stopped improving the project. Today, at 25 years of age, he has already developed more than 12 machines aimed at environmental, health, and even industrial problems. A large part of the materials comes from electronic waste and from donations from friends and from strangers who follow his work. A neighbor, for example, has been using Emeka's generator for more than one year and guarantees that it works well. All that is missing is for the inventor to manage to produce at scale to sell it. It is not a perfect piece of equipment, and he himself admits that there are flaws to correct. But in a country accustomed to blackouts, the idea of having clean and accessible energy is the kind of innovation that many people root for to work out. In 2022, a Nigerian startup called Unicon Group presented to the world Omifi, the continent's first humanoid robot. With 1 meter and 80 centimeters in height and a feminine appearance, she was designed to understand and reproduce elements of African culture, something that few robots in the world can do. Omeife speaks eight different African languages, in addition to English with native accent, intonation, and vocabulary. It is not just translating words. She pronounces entire sentences with the correct cadence, as if she had grown up speaking that language. That includes slang, expressions, and even care to avoid terms that sound offensive following local cultural standards. The creator, Chooks Ekwemi, explains that she understands the environment in real time, can listen actively, and maintain a dialogue without getting lost in the middle of the conversation. The machine is also capable of focusing on a specific person, filtering out what is not relevant to the interaction. Mm -hmm. What are the most important qualities for success in life? Wow. Artificial intelligence. Omefe's goal is not just to impress. The idea is that she can be used for education, tourism, language training, and even to preserve cultural traditions. She was designed to interact well with children and to adapt to different social contexts, something important on such a diverse continent. While in many countries, artificial intelligence is still seen as something distant, Nigeria has already shown that it can also create cutting-edge technology with its own identity. Don't forget to subscribe so you can watch more videos like this.